ברוכים הבאים, and a Shabbat Shalom to everyone. I would like to give a higher uh, commendation to each and every one of you who are diligently committed to the furtherance and elevation of your neshama, your soul, that you are in full diligence to feed your soul and to come to know the divine plan of the of Hakadosh Baruch Hu, the Holy One of Israel, because it is of such magnitude importance that we in this time that we are in, in this Akhrit Hayamim, in this final hour, final hour, we should know there shouldn't be any guessing or hoping or doing anything that is not falling in proper plan of God. It is something that we cannot afford to miss out. Something that you and I have a duty, a mandate, a responsibility, coupled with a joy and delight to be in the will of our Father God in heaven. And as he has brought us once again to Sefer Breshit, I would like to share to you chapter 1, verse 1 of the book of Genesis, Breshit, chapter 1, verse 1. And it says in Hebrew, Breshit bara Elohim et hashamayim ve'et ha'aretz. In English, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But that is something that we have to set aside, the translation in English. We have to understand the beauty of the mother tongue Hebrew scripture, which says, Breshit bara Elohim. Three words, Breshit, at first, or in beginning. And then it says, bara, created. And then it says, Elohim. At first, God created. Now let's study for the meantime. If we are going to select the last letter of the three first words, the last letter of Breshit is the letter Tav. And then the last letter of the word bara, created, is the letter Aleph. And the, la and the third word is the name, the title of, of Hashem, which is Elohim. I just intentionally mispronounce it. I, I just intentionally spell it out wrongly. Elohim. But the last letter is the letter, you got it right, Mem. So picking the three letters, that is Tav, Aleph, Mem, we arrive into a word, emet. Emet. Aleph, Mem, Tav. If we juggle the letters, we will reach the beautiful word that comprises the absolute reality of the Torah, which is emet. Emet means truth. And we are supposed to know by heart, deep within the recesses of our souls, that God is operating only according to the truth. And he is the absolute truth. This day and age, we should clearly know the first truth. And that is, Hashem is always in full control. There is nothing that happens that is not being properly ordained, appointed, orchestrated by the Holy One of Israel. And the next thing that I would like to give emphasis of in this Shi'or is this is the time when God accelerates the messianic process through the silver lining of what's going on. What is the silver lining? What does it mean? Silver lining is the 
the break of the dawn or the bright side of the layers of darkness that we normally see, silver lining beyond those layers and layers of darkness. What are those darkness? The layers of lies and deceptions, the layers of manipulations and all the wickedness and evil that the world is trying to, to paint a big picture that many people in the world are embracing and running after. But these are just mere deceptions and lies. These are things that we are not supposedly be allured or be enticed. Why? Know for a fact, beloved, that this trouble and war that happened and is still happening in the Holy Land of Israel is divinely orchestrated by the Holy One of Israel. He is the God of Abraham, Itzkak, and Yaakov. And his process is to accelerate, to hasten, make it more faster, the messianic process. And through this silver lining, through these things, that horrible things, the brutality and the subhuman works of a Hamas, when, when Hamas terrorists invaded the kibbutzim, this these places that are so peaceful, filled with joy. And it is not surprising to see how and why it happened. If you remember still, it was just yesterday that we had just enjoyed and celebrated the Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah, we, we greeted one another with Shana Tova. The starting year of Tishrei Rosh Kodesh. And during the time, God, as the sages say, their blessed memory, that during the Rosh Hashanah, it is only God who stands up before the Kisei HaKavod, his throne of glory, and pronounces judgment upon all his creation. All the people, the animals, the trees, everything that he had created, he pronounced judgment. Because righteousness, justice, and truth are the foundation of God's throne. So during Rosh Hashanah, God pronounced his judgment. And then 10 years, or sorry, 10 days later comes the Yom Kippur. During the Yom Kippurim, God signed the judgment. And then a few days later came the Chag Sukkot. And we enjoyed, celebrated this fall great high feast of Hashem's Sukkot. And then on the eighth day of Chag Sukkot, we celebrated another great event, and that is Hoshana Rabbah. Hoshana Rabbah is the time when HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the God of Israel, sealed the judgment. He sealed the judgment according to his sovereign plan and will. Before those things happen, God has been calling all his people Israel, both the Jewish people, the believers in the Jewish uh, faith, and also the Orthodox non-Messianic people in the house of Israel combined are being called by God to do genuine teshuva, genuine repentance, coupled by genuine tikkunim. And within the house of Israel are also the believers from the nations of the world. We call from Romans 11, the grafted in believers, grafted in into the same olive tree with the natural branches referred to the Jewish believers in Messiah, Yeshua. So the calling is one, to do shuva, to do repentance, not just, not just a mediocre repentance, not just a lukewarm repentance, but really dig deep into the very depth of our souls, make introspections, 
make self-examinations, make self-analysis, and ask God to purify us from all uncleanness, filthiness, blotted out through the precious shed life blood of Melech HaMashiach Yeshua, our Lord. And we did that. And then, Hoshana Rabbah, on the eighth day of the great Chag of Sukkot, came the sealing. God sealed what he has pronounced during the Rosh Shana, what he has signed during the Yom Kippurim, and he sealed. He sealed it during the, the Hoshana Rabbah, the eighth day. And would it be shocking, would it be surprising to know that after Hoshana Rabbah came the brutal invasion of the Hamas terrorists, brutally massacred, destroyed the precious Israeli souls, killed the babies, cut off their heads, raped the women, brutally slaughtered, butchered, as they say it. So what happens there? God is in control. And this is a foolproof, my friends, that the plan of God is already getting faster. As if you can see in the spirit that he has no more time to make things right from his own people. He has to set the judgment. He has to set the record straight. Because nothing can ever be done without the divine approval of the divine. And that is something that is so elementary for each and every one of us to accept with all of our hearts. Because God is in Od Milvado. He is over all things he is on top of every situation, and he must do whatever he must do. And I just, and I just would like to share to you a scripture from Tehillim, which the Lord has given us, coupled and linked in this shiur. It is in Psalm 127, verses one and two, Tehillim chapter 127, verses one and two, and I read. A song of accent or ascents of Solomon. Unless Shem builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless Hashem watches over the city, the watchman stands guard in vain. In vain you rise up early and stay up late, eating the bread of toil, for he provides for his beloved ones even in their sleep. This is a very powerful scripture from Tehillim that most of the leaders and the political leaders in the nations of the world, the great and mighty men who are leading their countries seem to have forgotten that with all their abilities and all their strategies and, and ammunitions and power in their own respective government, this word will stand mighty. Overall, the ingenuity and plan of the nations of the world, and that includes the United States of America, that includes the nation of Israel, who we love and bless and identify ourselves as one in life and in death. But here, as I preached, no one is excused unless Hashem builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless Hashem watches over the city, the watchman starts guard in vain. This is something very true, my friends. If God is not in the picture, if God is not praised and exalted among the leaders of the government, that includes Israel. They will just labor in vain. There's going to be a miscalculation. As they say, the ball will drop because of some military failures. 
military intelligence will be for nothing if God is not glorified. If God is not the builder of the city, if God is not in the center of the plan, whatever man does, man will labor in vain. That is a fact and it cannot be disputed, my friends. And this is the time, if you still notice what happened in the near past, that the nation of Israel had been divided. So much sinat chinam, baseless hatred. They are fighting. We are fighting. Who will who will lead reforming the judiciary system? And there were so many protests and rallies all over. Do you still remember that? And because of that, the nation had been divided. And scripture says that the house cannot stand if it is divided. And more so, the baseless hatred, the sinat chinam, and so much, so much has, has taken its toll. The true, not true enough, it weakened the nation. And because of that, there was a total absence of right planning. There was a military intelligence failure, obviously. Why? Because one plus one equals two. These things can never happen. Never will it happen. Even in dreams, I cannot, I cannot agree. I cannot be deceived. Something had happened. And because it was allowed to happen, then Hamas terrorist was able to invade the people of Israel. They were able to go to the kibbutz, to the kibbutzim. They were able to to do the, the brutality and all this inhumane and subhumane kind of slaughtering and butchering because God allowed it to be so. God is calling the house of Israel because it is the judgment that comes of first in the house of Israel. And when the house of Israel is first judged by HaKadosh Baruch Hu, wake up, patience of the world. You will follow definitely. So we see. So we see that God is calling people first, the Israeli citizenry, to stop, to stop division, to stop, to stop this baseless hatred, but unite once again. Unite in one purpose, in one love, and that is to do God's will and to truly become one, as we always say, Chol Am Israel, Aravim Zeilaze. All Israel is accountable of one another. There shouldn't be any division among us. There shouldn't be any quarreling among us. But it happened. It did. That is why the urgency of God's judgment fell upon the day after of Hoshana Rabbah. This is something that shouldn't be surprising because we are God's people. The foundation of our faith is Torah. That is very clear and simple from the Holy Torah. And something that is going to be a lesson for life to those who made a big blunder and who became negligent and dropped the ball, as they say, that made the intelligence fail. It's going to be maybe a lifetime hounding, hounding guilt and condemnation. But let God be the one to deal with them. The purpose of this shiur is to tell you, my friends, God allows things to happen when his people are divided. But what was the effect? Because of that thing, the Israeli citizens from the nations of the world had been called by the government to come back to Israel, and they did. 
all the, the citizenry, if not 100%, even the 95 years old grandfather joined the, the, the IDF, the father together with their sons, the father together with their daughters joined the IDF. They realized what they have missed and they made the name. They united for one cause, and that is Ahavat Israel, for the love of our country, Israel. Something that we learned our lessons even the hard way, but it is not yet late. Now we can see those Israeli young people who went off the derech. What I mean to say is they backslid, turn away from Torah, turn away from Shabbat, turn away from, from obeying mitzvot. During this time, their eyes were open and they were asking their ima, mother, can you please send me a talit, send me uh, a kippah, can you please send me the, the tefillin? that I will bring every morning and, and do my davening, my prayer during war. Beautiful thing, isn't it, my dear friends? The nations of the world, the, the crafted in believers from the nations of the world are now awakened. No more fighting. No more treating something lower than, than the neighbor, but let us esteem each other higher than ourselves. Let us humble ourselves, let's unite ourselves. For we are in this together. We are in the house of Israel and we have been called to be spiritual IDFs, spiritual soldiers to do the same warfare, greater than the task of our IDF brothers. Not just fighting Hamas, but fighting all forms, shapes, and size of evil throughout this world. And one thing that I would like to raise up is it is not only the time for war, as in Ecclesiastes says, chapter 3, it is time for uprooting, uprooting. And what do I mean by that? Listen very carefully, my friend. As the Spirit of Hashem has spoken to my heart, as just a simple, good-for-nothing, one servant of Hashem who lives up here in the southern part of Luzon, Tagaytay City, Philippines. The word uprooting in Ecclesiastes chapter 3. There will be an uprooting of the Hamas terrorists in Gaza. No one can stop the uprooting of this terrorist. And because of that, the idea of soldiers will surely look for the last Hamas terrorist and wipe them off the face of this earth. There is no more room for this subhumane, for this beast-like creatures whose intention is not to, to have the land of Israel be, be theirs as their property. They have no interest in the holy land of, in, of Israel. Don't you know that? The Hamas terrorist heart's desire is to kill the Jewish people up to the last Jewish Israeli soul. They do not care for any physical property. They are demonic and satanically driven, period. That is why through Bibi Netanyahu and Benny Gantz and Yoav Galant who united and showed their unwavering unity in this new government coalition of Israel, they said that they will destroy all the Hamas up to the last Hamas terrorists and wipe it away once and for all out of the Gaza places. And then what will happen? Of course, the Arab Muslim countries 
will not allow this thing to happen. That is why the Syrians, the Jordanians, the Egyptians, the Iranians, the Turkish, and all these this Arab Muslim neighboring countries will rise up against Israel. Something that it is now going to happen. Psalm 83 is being fulfilled before our time today, my dear one. Persia, Iran are now positioning themselves. Syria had already sent missiles. And so many countries inside the Arab Muslim world, Arava, which is Saudi Arabia, is now planning to do war against Israel. There's going to be a lot of deceptions and lies which you and I should never be deceived. All those people, the political leaders, the government leaders, are all susceptible to deceptions and lies because God is not with them. Unless Hashem watches over the city, the watchman starts or stands and guards in vain. Unless Hashem builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Let us never forget that, my dear friend. But this is the time that HaKadosh Baruch Hu will make our faith greater than as it had never been before. To those who are truly His, to those who are united with Israel in life and in death, will never keep silent. My dear friends, I would like to take this blessed opportunity to call upon each and every one to make a fast every day, even just for one meal a day, a fast for Israel, fast for those hostages to be returned to the mighty miraculous intervention of Hashem through His Malachim, His angels, to bring them all back safe and sound. The idea of soldiers to truly feel a greater measure of strength and power from the Ruach Chodesh and through this, through the united warfare, they will see themselves one with one another. No more sinat chinam, no more baseless hatred. God will turn this all around for good because he is accelerating the messianic process through this silver lining. And you are called, you and I are called, my dear friends, to do our rightful part. Be a strong, active participator and not just as a spectator. We are being called by God to do warfare. We are called by God to pray and fast. Not just pray. This is not the time for a five to 10 minute generic prayer. This is the time for real, real prayer and fasting. Because as we fast, we give a part of us with the IDF a part of us with those people that are in new, endured in the hospital. We are giving a part of us among those who are hostaged by the Hamas. We are always a part of Israel. And this is the time to show the one who sits at the balcony of the Hashemayim and see us doing his will moving according to his marching orders. And we know 
at the end of this story, we will win. And that victory is not here, but it is the coming of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, which is the eventual plan of the God of Israel to hasten, to speed up, to accelerate this messianic process. I challenge you, my dear friends, if you have been blessed by this message, share, share, share. Do your rightful part. Fast, even for one meal, at least for seven days. And we will see later on what the Spirit of God will tell us later on. If we are going to be continuing this for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. And that kingdom's name is the house of Israel in Messiah Yeshua, our Lord. May the God of Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov bless you. And may you truly receive a new and fresh breath of God's power, wisdom, and strength. For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but he has given us the spirit of love, power, and of a sound mind. Shabbat shalom, my dear friends. Lehitrot and Koltov.